There used to be an old expression called bush gentleman. And I say used to be, because they don't make them like that anymore. I've traveled around a lot to hear different stories from different places and it fills your mind with the, how things used to be and the strength of it all. It's been great out here in Waterman country. Hearing Uncle Bill's stories, the depth of his knowledge and the strength in his voice, hearing the language, seeing the country, I'm there with him. Listen to his yarns, listen to the laughter in his voice. A lot of things he could be bitter for, but he's not ready to be bitter. And he sure hell is not ready to slow down. I wish him well. Little peaceful dub, and he went over there, dug a hole, because there's no water around this country, in a place called Kororokja. Way out in the never never. 
Then the open plain. There's hardly any tree all around it. They were dancing around this little rock hole where they, they were digging. They were singing about this water. Then they go away singing and they come back again and look. Still no water. They go on head again singing. They went on head singing and singing. And then they went away. And then come back, they can see that the earth's getting damp. And they continue singing. Anyway, uh, next they saw the water come up. When the water come up, they were happy. They drank that water and they gave it to all the others. This is a rock pool of water, way out in the open plain, in the black soil plain over here, way up. And all the rocks, all sitting around, round like this, that's the part of the, all the diamond dub, peaceful dub, cockatoo and all that, all standing there. When they change from bird, their shadow become a rock now, and then that's where all these little groups of rock, mm -hmm. all the way around this big rock hole. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, well, all right, we'll call for everybody to come here to do the, the ceremony, nah? they said. Anyway, they started to sing in there. <laughs> Well, I was singing that that they were standing around in this rock hole that made it the water to come up. The Morondondola mean that uh, they all be like where they remove all the hearse, and after they drank water, and the Yadjadjala mean that they all moved away, ne? and they left all the, the marking and track in there, and that's what all those little pointy rocks like these, very interesting lots of rock holes standing around like that. Just like if somebody built a little yard, you know. Mm -hmm. Just like that, those rocks, little, little eye rocks all the way. And this big rock pool in there. One now changing to become a bird and they go, that's why you can hear the sound of that um, diamond dove too. You go, they're changing all the different tunes. I was a kid who was running around here in this part of the country because I'm a waterman. This is my mother dreaming country here. This one is called Kolorokcha. Kolorokcha is all a diamond dub dreaming and peaceful dub dreaming. That's so how you can hear that sound of the diamond up still today. We are Nanyang and Bulma, that mean. Water coming up, not rising. And everybody come down, have a look, they were happy. This whole rocks, everywhere you see that part of the old diamond up. We're sitting around in a group, all around in here. And they were happy. So the male was down that side up top. And all the female were down here. They're the one that made it happen to this water hole. This is the real dreaming sacred site. For women, ceremony place. My mother country. Later on, when a white man come along, they call it dummy rock hole. This water never go dry because it's been sung by the diamond of dreaming. In early days, we used to come on foot, all around. We always come over and camp. 
It was the most big ceremony place for the people over there. A lot of initiation been done over there with a lot of old people up top in that plateau. The last time when I came here, back in 1957, when we mustered in the old cattle here, that's a fair while ago. When I was a kid, growing up, when I was a stockman, they always come down, have lunch and all this sort of type. This water was, was full like this all the year round. Never go dry. But in our own spiritual mind, the old rainbow keep feeding the water in this magnificent rock hole there. And that been like this since I was a kid, anyway. And a black basalt, the Aboriginal name called Barwinin. The Barwinin, it's like a slight basalt, you can see, very thin and long and flat. A diamond up use. You can hear the sound on the wing. And all this a flat rock here, you can see. It's like a tavern stick. It make a very loud sound. I get this little sample. But I get this another one here. Or oh, this one might be. You can hear that. See, that's a real sound. That's a real, really bell sound. And that's a very interesting little basalt called Barwinin. I put it back for my mom because this is dreaming. When I picked it up and I put this one back, he's blowing there. We can't let anybody take anything away. And this is all my, all my mother, all my sisters and all that. They're all in here. That's why I come to. Come over, Bishop. My mother dreaming here in this rock hole. about all the creation history. Now, before that, what happened in this country? There was no rocks. And there was no tree or grass of any sort. And the, uh, the first of the three people was in this country. Now, uh, the one is old rainbow. The one that made the sea. An old lady called Dung Dung come out of the side of the earth, she's a frog lady, and went across and made it up with old rainbow. Two in old rainbow and Dung Dung sat together. Anyway, uh, later, they got married up and they had many children all under water. The later, Dung Dung walked out inland to dry herself out. Another one came down from the sky it's called Nade. He's a long Mimi man. Came down and landed beside a Dundung. And he said to Nade, where'd you come from? And Nade said, oh, I came from the top. And, they, uh, and uh, Nade asked the Dundung, where'd you come from? And she said, I come out of the side of the earth. Oh. Anyway, they sat down. <laughs> And they had to talk, and they got made it up. And then uh, Dung Dung finished up with the two husbands. He had all rainbow, and he had Nadi. Twin and Nadi and the Dung Dung, they had many children, who was part of the old lightning people. The lightning, the one who struck the land in this country. They put all the songs together. They named it all the different plants. They named it all the different soil, the earth and everything. They invented all the different tools. They would graph and everything. They made a big creation song and the story right across the country, all around, with the lightning people. While they were there together, and they were making all these songs, and they made a lot of noise, and all rainbow can hear them. And he woke up and stood up, and he looked inland with many people walking around. 
Then old Rainbow walked across and said to old Dundle, why you do this, I bring everybody out here in the dry land, we should have everybody together all under water. Now Dung Dung said, no, we got to have two separate lots, one lot in the water and one lot inland. And Rainbow said, no, we're going to have everybody all under water. And Rainbow goes back and he sang the great big spiritual song. He sang it and made the water rise. And water come right over in this country and flooded the whole world. This country was in big flood. We call that the Ngabal Ngabal was here. The song for the Ngabal Ngabal also in the creation song, and we still use that song today. Never threw any the creation song away. We still teach them to the young. When the flood was rising, all these little lightning people moved from the low country and went up and based on the top of this high mount. The night they come down from the sky, helping all these children. Walking across the water, he was a very huge, tall man. That's why they call him a Mimi. And picking up all these children, water was only up to his waist deep, and the water was rising, and putting all these little lightning people on top of the high mount. And everybody was watching, and looking at the water rising. And they all learned there was no bird in this country, all lightning people. One of them is now today is a bird, because he changed from the lightning people to become a little bird now. Huh? It's called Willy Wagtail. The Willy Wagtail, the one he invented all the stone tool, made spear points, stone axes, graver, and everything out of a mud. And he sang it, it all went wild. And he made a pointy one. He said, this might be ideal to speed our rainbow, get rid of the water. We don't want to get drowned. And the uh, Willy Wagtail raced across and said to the old lightning, he said, maybe the way we can go to speed that rainbow. And lightning reckoned, good idea to get rid of the old rainbow. Anyway, um, then the lightning said, all right, give us that spear. Wait a minute, the Willy Wagtail said, I'll go down and make the long end of the spear. Né? He clacked all the mud and he rubbed it together, made it longer, and he sang it, made it like a long spear and put these little flints on the end of it, out of a mud again, and it was very strong. But he made many of them. And he went across and gave it to the lightning. Lightning, the one threw the spear, hit the old rainbow, cut him in half, never killed him. And old rainbow got very annoyed. And he sang it, and he brought his water right up. And then the, the lightning said, oh, keep that spear to the gray falcon. Now, he was a human first, now he's a bird today. Now, the falcon, so wants to carry the fire. Um, he carries a, what we call jundin, he's a boning tool. And he carries it and then flies him across it with this, uh, with like the feather and stuff like this. And we'll show the shooting star. But the falcon, he invented all that song. And he picked up this spear point and he sang it. And he sang it to go straight to the old rainbows to kill our rainbow. When he sang it, and when after he finished, the grey falcon, the one who threw his spear, came right across the country, straight to the old rainbow, shot his head right off. The head of the rainbow fell down, and the tail end stayed away, and the water ran right back to the sea level where the rainbow made up. The big whirlpool there, with the big spiritual song, and that's where the whole water disappeared, and that's why it is there today. <laughs>
Now with that, with all rainbow, the one, the female one, and the male one. Those two, the one to make the sound on the flood water, like the digital do sound. Then he gave him a sound to the little ants. And the little ants went along, start drilling hole in the wood. But they couldn't blow the digital do. The long tail pheasant, the one that the might have happened, that part of the digeridoo, he got in his tail now. He started cleaning it up and he was blowing it. When he blew that, he said, this is ideal. And then there's a butcher bird people who was there. And he, uh, he made a club stick. When he made a club stick, he's singing. And, and there's a peewee with a dancer, many of them. Bill Ivers and Chabaroos and everything, all dancing. They were part of the old people. Mm. They all dancing, every water bird you see. Mm. They all being a dancer mm. with the digital group. Anyway, one now, they do not, they said, oh, we'll, we'll love all this. We could trade all this all the way from our time to the generation now. That's what they said, the bird people. But all rainbow, he make the dilly bag also. The female and a male uh, rainbow there too. Husband and with them all the little flying fox. One brown flying fox called Kanben. Another flying fox is a black one called Mungen. And that's the two children of the rainbow. And this all all the flying fox, black one and brown one, they're all in the inside of the dilly bag. And after that, he'll wind a little bag up. And he tells all the plant folk in the afternoon, 
You can all go out and crawl up the tree and fly out and look for your food inland. They all went out, gone looking for food. They've been eating all the flowers everywhere off the tree. And just before breaking dawn, you start blowing a didgeridoo for them. When they're blowing the rainbow, is blowing a didgeridoo sound, and all the plant fucking here is coming. The sound. And they all come back. They were doing it like a big loop, like a big ring. They start off from there, come around like this in the queue, and they go all the way down to Digeridoo back to the tiller bank. All a lot of them. They were doing that, you know, all the way, and the Digeridoo be still there, making sound. They go into the tiller bank, and, and they'll be there, and the next thing they crawl up to the to the tree, and then they'll they go hanging down everywhere. Gang, 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 gang. During the day, till afternoon, they go again. You know? Oh yeah, water there, all right. You come up now, yeah, and water me head. What I'm in on now. This is keeping me clean. You look me at shade, like it, like a bumble. You got to get an idea, like it, see? Well, again, all the way at Sunday, and I do. Might be that side that I look here first. Now, uh, I brought a young boy here with me to show him in a special spring. This is a special spring. All these trees are recognized in our creation story. They are part of the human. Now today they are the old people living in the spring, under the water. And all old ladies are part of the pandemics you see over there. Stay upstream here a bit. And they're all listening when we brought this young boy here to give him a clearing. We call that an Aboriginal name called Ingwana. Ingwana means he's a young teenage boy. Gonna give him a clearing through this dreaming from the water. To wet his head, he gotta spit the water out. I gotta tap his head in the water. Then that's giving him a clearing. And when he gets clear with that, and that way, because he's a young one, when we give him a clean, he's ready to go out the free man for, for marriage and all these sort of time. When he gets married, he's already clean. He don't get into trouble anymore. Because this is why we give him a clean the wedding he said. You know, when he gets married, he don't have trouble anyway. And now I'm going to give him a cup of water. You're going to be in the bedroom. Close up. I'm going to give him this cup of water, like this. My enemy can get on them, but then I give him this cup of water. He got to put, it, put him in his mouth where I've been drawing you, and you rent your mouth and spit him out there, like a little water again. He, he sort of cockle in that water and spit him out. One more, there now. Now with that same water, i got to put a little bit in my hand, and I tap his head, like this. The wet his head, that way he don't get sick or anything like that. And I gotta call out to the old people with my language. Maraluga, Danonian, Nagan, 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 Nagan,
Nogana or Dana Noyan, Nona and Guy Imumia, Lad Bernay, Barawa, Guyawa. Nabun Rogan, a lay one pony. Animan. Joe, the Rubai, and Ingoan on one now, edging in. In Jagalurbo and Taolan, Ingala and Yanangwa. That's when he get married. Ingala and men, when he get married. He's free now from the water, giving him a free. See? At night time, when he goes to sleep, he won't dream any bad spirits. He's right now, because it's water now, tapping him in the head to keep him clean. And that's the only mud bunker this place called. And all these three, they're all people. All of them is all old lady, and they're all here underneath it. Underneath the water. And they're giving him okay now. And there is now. Come right now, you can get up. Then we can go back get on now. And he's right now, there. And he's all chain him anyway. That's good. Yeah. Ejuru janja wara bandu nyun badu go badu badu go badu. Ejuru janja wara bandu nyun badu go badu badu go badu. Ejuru janja wara bandu nyun badu go badu I missed that rock. <laughs> <laughs> the blood away too quick. <laughs> I just dig the whole sand of it. <sighs> yeah, and you're digging up with my feet. Just digging the sand up, you know. Mad I feel a soft part here, summer. Oh, the too quick. I got a little bit there. Just a sample. That's the sand again. Right <laughs> <laughs> there. Any luck? Yeah. Here's a piece. And another yeah. little one. Yeah. You got it. You got it all very, I 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 all very, La Brandia, Dalamanda, La Brandia, Dalamanda, La Brandia, Dalamanda, La Brandia, and Dalamanda, La Brandia, 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 Manga Yurban, Ding Gurban, 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 Manga Yurban, Gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo. This is a really sacred spot. Look at it coming off my hand. Oh man, Bill said to me, go and dive between these trees. 
and look for a crack, if we feel for a crack in the rock, one little crack. And then uh, about 15 years ago, I did it, and we found it. And he said they used it for ceremonies for years and years. That's all the sound was coming in when I was singing. There was a dance that was coming in with all the kangaroo people. Manga Yurbane, Ding Gurbane, 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 Manga Yurbane, Ding Stampeding, dancing. Each time they travel and, and stop and look around and name the place. Gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada 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 ler bombo, ler bombo. Gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler bombo, ler bombo, gada gada ler. We'll be singing all these songs for about a month. Because you'll be just in this big area, you'll be zigzagging and naming all the different plants and soils and earth and trees and spring, all sorts, from the sand to gravel. To everything you can name it, where he's buried, like this ochre buried, like this uh, white pigment under, you know, doesn't get washed off. One big song line, chick jack everywhere, all over. We still got that song today, the original one. <laughs> Ooh, 
Now, here I am, where I'm sitting, in this Colorado country, um, called Diamond Up Dreaming area, up top. Now, uh, that's still in the Mengen land. And they see this termite. People looking at it, they just say termite. But this termite has a lot of, lot of good medicine inside it. The little black ants make it. Now with this, yeah, they use for lots of different things. You see when I'm gonna open them up here on the side. Uh, you see how uh, rip them off. You know, uh, now with them, all these are little funnels. See those little funnels? That's where the ants go and live. And you can see some of them walking around there. They're the important little ants. Anyway, uh, they're the ones that make a nest. And they put a song on it. And then they kill everything. If you've got a stomach problem, you eat this, and that will fix you all the pain. You got arthritis, this one will fix it. If you got a in your pelvis, where the bone joined to the hips from your back, and this one is a real number one for it. You can do all sorts with it. You can eat it straight, a um, little bit to fix it. Or you can get a big lot, put them on a the fire and then eat it up. This one holds a lot of heat too. You spread them out and you can lay on it with a little straw and you wet it. When you wet it, all the steam come up. The steam from the termite will go right through your system in your body. And that's clean your whole body inside. I'll just eat a little bit of this, you can see it. That little one there, I put them in my mouth. I'll eat some more later, see the little black one? I put them in there. It doesn't kill you or affect you. It hurts because it's got a, all the termite fertilizer from the ant, which put everything together in place. How they do this because they sing a song for it. And this way the song go for him. For the little termite. Because a great big termite. Anyway, they're, they're the two the best one. Well all of them anyway. But this is a song. There's a song that all the termites sings, and if I put all the song and the spit and everything together, to hold the strength, doesn't rain, doesn't matter how much rain can come, he can't wash them off. Because he's got like a wax from his spit put in, uh, put in his termite, this garden. And uh, this is a great little garden, the one that does all the curing. And for all the, to what's an infected body you've got inside. I think it's, we haven't tried it on a cancer, but I reckon this one will fix the cancer too, might be. Never know, because this one will work. But you work on all other stuff, and then this one usually pull everything out. You know, with this termite here, all well, it. I'll take it out a bit more. There are all those little, well, pockets there, look. Little grooves. That's got like a pipe with the air. Doesn't matter how close it is, but they got a hair here, they got a breezer. That's why all these little ants can live here. Now, um, 
This is what I'm just breaking them up. Yeah, that one there, big fish, see? Fish my belly up. Yeah. And that's the song for all the Tamites and everything, all dancing and everything inside. They all throw the spit. And they got spit like a wax. Glue every bit of this Tamite. See where I've been cutting them with the axe? That's a job to cut, cut it, see? Then they leave the mark like a wood. This one here, they don't have any straw much. They just got a spit on it with a song. With a song with Yarindi, we call it. Yarindi song goes in there. And that's where they keep everything tight. Well packed, yes, from the spit. And same time they make all these little group, so they can go all around, in and out, in and out. But sure later they pop out, and they go back again. If it's wet, they rebuild it, make it go a little bit bigger. Might be in another two years time, it'll be this side. Then they go along. As soon as the rain comes, they wet it, they work on it. They just collecting all others. That's from there with the spit. They all come in millions. And they all build it up there. Up there. And they're all going inside and they seal the wall up so nothing can see them. They all live here inside. They don't walk around. You know? And then that's why they live there. They eat this first again. They're regenerating and everything, all that. You can see them all listening to here, big mob of them. And that's the song for all the Tamites and everything, all dancing and everything inside. Now I tell you all about it. Is the way that you know all clan group ourselves I'm talking about first. Well, all these are different boundary in in uh, what they call a dreaming track. Dream all our dreaming and he goes stop. Right to another block got a dream and we join together like this. They're on that side, we're on this side. That's why we respect one another in that boundary. White men call a boundary, but that's our boundary line as well. And when we go along to, to the outsider, where the song line finishes up in the boundary, because that other mob, they, they join us, they respect one another again. You've got the clan groups and together, and then the dream, different dreaming, and yeah. then the song line comes song through. Song line the... just goes zigzag like this, everywhere. And it goes through those different, the different. Yeah, all, he goes through every one of them. And it gets picked up by the neighbour. Na well, uh, the neighbour, it's an outsider neighbour, but the old clan group neighbour, inside, inside of the song line, in the song line, till he gets up to that, that other mob, the outsider. The neighbor, then uh, the song line stop in our side, and they take over their song line from our side to go. We more to connect together. Yeah. And then they do it their way, no? Right. You know, all the way. That's where the connection is. And that's why that there's no arguing. 
No row what told them they got, what told them we got this side, they all, they respect one another. So it teaches respect? Yeah, it teaches the respect on both sides, you know. And I saw them on this side, Kaluru that side. That side. And them on this side, Naringman that side. And for example, if the river goes through... The river goes through, through we're yeah. taking river and half and half. And then you share the water? Yeah, we share the water because there's a song line, goes across over the river, come back through. And all the, the mainstream, the river, and I can't finish up, might be another man land that is totem, that is country and dreaming there, fine. You know, that's it. But everything they told them, or it might be the different fish people from the little water, but they in the big water, they respect that they dream into in the water, just in the mm. water, that's they dreaming that little fish or crocodile or whatever. Mm. You know, like that. Mm. Not like a white man, they, uh, they don't respect the water like with the boundary. Mm. Let's say put a fence up. Mm. They often put a fence or a wall. Yeah, well, wall or fence. But us, we can recognise. Yeah. Where you dream and go and stop. And and the neighbours, you know, on the on the boundaries, you come together for ceremonies too. Yeah, well, we'll we'll send a message out and they come. And they have a ceremony here with us. And they send a message down, we go, and we have a ceremony. And with you have them. a ceremony. And last year you were talking about doing joint initiations with the boys. Yeah. And you both came in, brought your boys in, and you were yeah. sharing the ceremony. Sharing the ceremony with initiation and everything. And that teaches respect. Yeah, and that teaches a real respect, yeah. And then you have your relationship system. And the relationship system. The skin. Skin, we will connect with them. You connect with them too. So yeah. you got cousins and brothers. Yeah, yeah and, and all that, our fun and all that. But all our proper dreaming, they hear. Right. They got their proper dreaming, they there. And you respected each yeah, other's, respect them too. Each other's dreaming. Yeah, yeah. If we got to go over there, we got to ask, are we right to go over there? They'll say, yeah, you can go. All right, mm. we go. We don't just bolt in and take over. So you, you have to get permission? Permission, yeah. Yeah, ask, make sure, you know, yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. And that's why they, that's why we respect one another. Yeah. 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 That's an Aboriginal way. Yeah. You know, but white man way different. It's different. They can come along with a bulldozer and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's really good, like everybody respects one another. And that promotes, you know, peace with all your neighbours all around, because you, yeah. you had... No, oh, right around. Seven, seven neighbours, yeah, yeah. maybe. Maybe more. Yeah. Maybe more. Mm. Yeah. And we can understand one another with the language. So when there is a, when there is a uh, conflict, yeah. you also have law yeah. that what you do if there's a conflict between two, say, you and Naliwuru, yeah. You're going to sit down and work it out, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, well, we can work it out, you know, and make it everything right. Yeah. No row, just talk about it. Yeah, so you you don't go out and start fighting? No, 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 no fighting and row and be aggressive like that, no. We just sit down and talk about it normal. And we come together, even. Proper respect. Yeah. And proper respect. Yeah. Keep that fire stick going now. Break all these up. That's all the little one. Yeah. Oh, everything will come up. Oh, I love yeah. the smoke. Yeah, yeah, lovely smoke. Yeah, put them in there, right there. Put them in there, up. Yeah. Anyway, there. Good. Sit around like this in the campfire. All people used to sit around. And they used to say, listen young boys, we got no watch. We gotta tell you all the star why we get trouble at night time. To tell you what that all people used to tell us. Mm. They used to say, stretch your leg like this. So, yeah. The very interesting old people where we used to sit around and talk to them. Now, they just tell us all the story about all the stars. They said that 
Milky Way you look at, we call that body. That's a Milky Way. Inside of that Milky Way, you see the emu, close to the pointer. Going my aging and now we and young we and Bullock, that means he's bending down to drink and water, close by the pointer. Now those two pointers there, in the side, one is called Madborongo, and one is called Nadia. There's a two, the one that created the country up. Where is the seven crosses, that's north up here, but you can't see it. That's the emu put pinch when he got up and walked away. All the stars, the one, what they explained to us, diver duck and kookaburra will guide you in the night. You know what direction you can go if you, you know, because there's a really, the map in the night, see? Now also with the driving days, no one had a watch. You know, we changed people when you're night watching. We just went by the star. Mm. Because there was the, that would just, you know, give you the time where you can change over the next one and all that. When you're riding around and you change over and all this, right up till daylight. Now those old people where they taught us and see that, those sort of things, we learned so much from them old people. Mm. We're trying to teach, teach some of the young ones about all them now. Some interested, some not. I was just listening to all the different birds and animals yeah. that are in the sky that are, that are guidance yeah. from summertime right through yeah. and other than cloudy night, yeah. you can basically get a direction where you want to go all the time. Yeah, yeah, but on star, yeah. Star will give you the good direction all the time. You know, all that sort of thing, you know, they were the good direction from the star. Because the star people were the creator too, from the mm. landscape of the star. Because people also have totems. Yeah, each one, everyone. Yeah. Mm. Everyone and that's knows. to protect everything within the environment. Yeah. With the totem from the, all the different animals, from the water side, yeah. right up to the tree, all the different ants, mosquito, flies, they're all part of their totem. Yeah. Right up to the star, they're part of the star. Mm. And all the different rocks. You know, another one day, oh, that's my dream, and he'll say, you can't touch him. Mm. Uh, he's my, not, don't drink that my dream and don't bulldoze him. You know, oh, that's part of their totem. Mm. Well, a white man reckon, oh, that's a rock. <laughs> but a black fellow says, that's our dream. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Because yeah. it sort of maintains their identity. Yeah, yeah. And if you take away that identity, yeah. they take away that rock. Rock, yeah. And take away that identity. And you take it away, you're dreaming, and you must like to get sick too. Mm. You take it, take it away from your country. The driving days are over. Nobody's singing any of those songs. Stock route to Heidling. The sound that the people used to make. Even a white man was singing to. Drove a boss. He didn't have much of a song, but they used to whistle a lot. You know, going around mumbling. But all Aboriginals had a great big voice. They used to sing a whole lot. And they go along all the way. They take the cows, deliver it in the area, and the place close to the trucking yard is. And then the one they yard them up, the old boys were sorry to see those old cows to go, to get slaughtered in the meat work, and then they come home. That was the droving days, all gone now. And all the sound and song. Jiwang Holland, Jiwang Holland, Bullet in Malaja, Laja, Gonaga, Jiwang Holland, Jiwang Holland, Jerry in Malaja, Laja, Gonaga, Jiwang Holland, Jiwang Holland, Bullet in Malaja, Laja, Gonaga, Jiwang Holland. That's been old robbers on Boba, just to demonstrate a little bit for that one. I liked that song, but I used to sing when I was a kid. 
When Aborigine walked around in this country in the past, wet season, right up to the dry season, working in the property, riding horses, all people told us to look after the country proper, caring for the country. They told us no need to break tree for nothing. You can only break leaf for what we use. You gotta look after that part of your dreaming and all that. Oh, every tree, everyone got dreaming. That's what they're, what they're caring man. You know, looking after the country, caring for country. The caring for country, what they said, you burn up early when everything cool, no leaf burn. We used to burn up straight after rain on April and May. We burnt all through. You know, burn in some places burnt, heavy, some places burnt a little bit. And all the way, that's keep the place that real tidy. But there was no leaf or tree got burnt, anything. All the tree was still standing up. Might be um, July, August, September, October. Sometimes you get that October around the lightning fire. But if the lightning started already, because you already burned up already on May and June, you know, fire will go and stop. Hot fire will come. But he'll stop our boy because that already been burned and the green shoot was already there and they can't get burned because the grass people isolated, see? And the fire break. Yeah, all over. And then now the other places like, like this one now didn't get burned. We'll go along and burn that around this around November. Make a big fire. But it won't burn the country out because he you can burn a big fire, I'll come, but the rain will come for that. Then you go along, burn it again. Right through from uh, November to December. Then all these big, tall, green grass will come, and you don't burn then. Right up till March, April, you start again. This area we burned last year. Mm. That area we burned over there year before last. And this area we're burning this year. Mm. You know, that is three places. That's what the Aborigine we do in the burning. When a parcel is coming in in this country, they went mad at Aborigine. They said, hey, what are you doing? Burn the feed for cattle and all this. Don't do that. No, they said, look, you burn off early, 
green grass come up. But if you don't burn this country, bushfire will come burn all that, you'll have no grass. This is why what we're doing, we survive the grass for all the animals. Kangaroo will come to eat, and cattle will come to eat. You know, we can leave it for this year, they said, you can look. Bushfire did come along and burn the whole country. See, we told you, that's right. All this river bank here, yeah, you burned up early, it all running, eh? it all burned up, finished. There was no leaf left and no little branch, everything, it all burned down. When the rain comes, it all sink down to the ground. But up to now, if you, you don't burn off, all the leaves and weeds and grass, everything there, uh, get pushed by the flood water, gone into the river, mm. building up, making big silk and all this, no? that's mm. what destroying the river. No? Mm. They have big blues and in the water and silk over on top of them. Mm. And you can't see the water. And also the charcoal, you said, filters. The yeah. Makes the water clean. You can add charcoal again, you know, and then when they get washed off from the top, all a little stick and all that, and keep, when they went in, charcoal is one of the best to keep the water clean, really clean, even ashes, white ashes. You know, mm. kept the water very clean all the way, all over, mm. you know. But today you see, like, the bushfire is free burning everywhere. You know, log burning and tree and all that, you know. But before, you wouldn't see any of those tree burn. In the dream time, who passed the law on about the burning? Them little bat. They're the two, the one that made it. Made it happen with the fire stick. He made a fire stick and then the Yagjagula took over. The Yagjagula used it to two flints, cracked it and lit the grass. You know, and then made a spark come up, and they lit the grass. That's what the Yagjagula, and that's what they, he's still there today. You know, the lightning, lightning burn, you call them. This is a weaver song, what old men showed me. Back in the war time when I was a kid, he used to only sing, he made up a lot of songs. This is Bombabad, first airplane they saw come across. You know, was Dr. Fandon brought this little plane, and he seen all this. Japanese plane flying around. And he made a song. And uh, he was a great singer, but he died in that old man back in the 40 when I was a kid. This is where he used to sing. Indian Buraka, Kerkulan Buraka, Ya, 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 Indian Indian 
song he made it back in his last war that's quite a long while ago 1940 anyway uh, he made a lot of songs but a lot of other songs I don't know any, but I only stuck to this one because he sound good easy to pick up and all that I think he was a wonderful to you do player as well and he had a good voice you know and that's the song and then go raga, Kerigulan go raga, ya 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 ya. During the creation time, to us we got a song. Moon got a song. That include that everything up top also with the Milky Way, Seven Cross. And they were part of the people again. They up top and all watching and looking. Now, the spiritual people who's in the country, in the cave, living in a way we believe they're still there today. Because the number of years and I've been everything changed. White men come along, put a bulldozer through the country, knock trees. Rocks and everything, scare the spiritual people out, and they come along to ask for mining rights to go down to dig up mine and all that. The spiritual gone mad now because they say we've got to do something about it to stop these people. That's what we can see what can happen, you know. Us old people didn't really knew what's going to happen because they're all the people who told us. And then we're trying to explain it to the younger one today. Now, uh, they sort of half believing and all that, but when you got the young one in the bush, they really believe it. But the one in town doesn't believe in much. When the rivers are coming up, then they get flooded because some other spiritual people they get underwater. You know, oh, this town gone stupid. That's what they say. We must bring the water right up. Then they, when they bring the water right up to the town area and then maybe to destroy the town. Then all these big crocodiles and everything moving into the street and town to eat all the food and everything. They look out for people as well, you know. The crocodile in our country, they move into the, to the main street at Woolworths and everything. Big Woolworths, they got all the chicken and he be there. Then they have a feed that if the roof sticking up on top in the, in the flood water, they go sleep on top of the roof, look out of who's going to come in and swim where, you know, that's what they do. Well, in the back again in the early day when I was a kid growing up in the country, us Aborigines sort of kept the crocodile down. We ate all the eggs we found. We killed crocodile for live, you know, that we eat ourselves. Kept the numbers down all the way, you know. We must have killed a male one, but we knew that female, we didn't touch it because we got to get some more egg. You know, we done all that. And then with the changing with this conservation one, it come along to change, you know, not to kill any crocodile and not burning off fires, you know, not let it become a park and all this. They're the conservation people that want to stop it from the harvesting the crocodile. And the crocodile sort of increase, you know. You know, they everywhere. In places where we are, there was no crocodile at all. Now the bigger crocodile chasing a little one right up to where we are now, on top of the hill. You know, little creeks like this full of water. When we cross over with the car, there's a crocodile going across, and a small one, but we eat them. But the bigger one, the, the man eating when he's back behind yet. Place in Darwin, never had any crocodile. No crocodile in Darwin. Ah, but there, everyone used to go down and swim and all this. Now crocodile moving in there, no? 
all the way along the coast there's a crocodile going around. And the crocodile will probably go right around the coast, you know, that's what kind of finished up to. But, you know, everything changed on crocodile. They said, oh, we have the office of crocodile. And a lot of people jump on the helicopters and go out and cry. Clack all the crocodile lake and everything when they take it back and put it on the farm. They go around and tranquilize all the bigger crocodile and put it on the farm. But it's too late. They're only getting 20, 30, but there's three million beyond yet still breeding up. You know, there's too many. You know, every water all in spring you can see that there's a crocodile all around. From the 80 up, that's when a crocodile moving into the shop tent when the river's right up. The crocodile and everything, you know, which is Really, it's a spiritual people that want to do all this, sorry. You know, uh, right across the country. background history on the stolen generation because my sister was taken away in the past. I don't know what year my sister born but he, I born 1931. I think she was about three four year old older than me. Anyway way she born she had a, an Aboriginal name also called Nyamuri and her skin was Nangari with my sister. But with her, what we were told from the early part, there was no welfare, took them, but with the policemen, threatened our people with a gun to take the kid away. And uh, that what I was described, they, they was telling me the policeman was called Bob Woods. And uh, the Bob Wood, the one made a lot of collection on all the kids from Waterman country. But my sister went away with the welfare in those days. Anyway, uh, the later on she come back, back in 1952. And I seen her, she was still a young teenager. Today we went up to Catherine on the uh, rodeo day. I was, I was nominated to ride a horse. Anyway, uh, then uh, they was calling my name. That's what pricked my sister ears. And he's looking around and he's watching and until I rode the horse. And after finished the rodeo and he got off the yard, came out, and he could see where I was hitting, and she walked up straight for me. She said, you know me, but uh, you wouldn't anyway, she said, because I left you a little one. When she said it, I sort of knew. And she told me who she was, and I recognized then. But she never forgot my name. Anyway, I uh, I was pleased to see her. That's what they, today they call it the stolen generation. The old man was telling me then, he said, old Joe, come on to you with the old stepfather. One day, the, the police threatened them. They had a bullet gun on them and everything, and he's taking the kids away. They upset the old people. Parents, you know, uh, then uh, they were very sad, the bad, when they taken a kid away. Especially when my sister was gone, but many others at the same time. Anyway, and then from there on, then my own age, I was a kid, my mother had a restricted on, on me because if she heard any welfare was around, she used to always put a charcoal on me black plum, make me go black. But with us, around here, we lived in the country, in the bush. 
But the welfare was still around the country, and, and they, uh, one of the welfare with Ted Evans tried to catch me. And they, because of the managers took a place for us, and they had ring the managers, and they had come out and flack all these little half guys kids, they call them. And then while I was coming out, and then the managers would come to us, and they said, go on, you can go away and go out with the horse and that, to the stock camp. Then Jack Liddell said, well, if you want Bill, he said, you can go after him with the horse if you want to. He said, the horse is down the yard. And as I walk up um, to the, the welfare, what they got to do, they have to put some root horses in there. And quite horse, but they buck too. Anyway, uh, and the blokes uh, will say to the Ted Evans, well, they said, you told me with all Aboriginal, they saddle up the horse for the welfare, you can go down and find Bill. And I old Ted Evan come up to the yard and jumped on the horse, and the horse is bucked like hell and got rid of him. <laughs> anyway, he uh, never come back looking for it. Jungle, jungle, dee dee dee.